Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so delighted to be here today. I had a little bit of a sneak preview yesterday underneath this very bridge to take the opportunity to observe this incredible infrastructure that is so needed here in Calgary. Let me begin by saying that today is a great day. I'm pleased to be here with my government colleagues and elected officials as we celebrate the opening of the final section of the Southwest Calgary Ring Road. I also want to acknowledge our presence on Treaty 7 territory today. Last October, we opened 12 kilometers of the Calgary Ring Road between Sarcy Trail and Fish Creek Boulevard, better known as Sutina Trail. We couldn't have reached this milestone without the support of our stakeholders and our long-standing relationship with Chief Roy Whitney and the Sutina Nation. Unfortunately, Chief Whitney could not be with us here today. My department finalized the land agreement with the nation back in 2013, an agreement that laid the foundation for this project. The Sutina Nation are the original keepers of this land and they are an important ally on this project. So I'm truly honoured to stand alongside the nation today as we open another portion of the Calgary Ring Road. A road that will be good for the nation's economic development and growth. A big reason why we're here today is because of my friend and predecessor in transportation, Municipal Affairs Minister Rick McIver. Minister McIver was a champion for this project and obviously remains so to this very day. I'd like to thank him for his stewardship, his passion and his commitment to getting the Southwest Ring Road completed. I'd also like to acknowledge the federal government's contribution of $334 million for this $1.4 billion project. As well, I'd like to thank Calgary Mayor Nahid Nenshi and the City of Calgary's support for this project, as well as the work of our contractor, Mountain View Partners and their design builder, KGL Constructors. Calgarians have been waiting for five long years for this day. They have endured construction, detours and disruption, but the wait was definitely worth it. The Southwest Calgary Ring Road is one of the largest public infrastructure projects ever built in Alberta. Opening this section of the Ring Road is a major accomplishment and builds on Alberta's recovery plan to create jobs, build infrastructure and diversify our economy. This project created approximately 2,000, let me say that again, 2,000 good paying jobs. This route is part of a larger east-west trade corridor that will enhance access to markets in and out of this province. And with traffic projected to grow to somewhere between 80,000 and 100,000 drivers per day by 2050, one gets a sense of just how important this section of the Ring Road is. I'd like to share some numbers to help explain how massive this project was. It included 49 bridges, 31 kilometers of new six and eight lane divided highway, 14 interchanges and three river crossings. And construction involved 13 million kilograms of steel rebar, 1 million metric tons of asphalt and 16 million cubic meters of excav excavated earth. To better understand that volume of excavated material, imagine the length and width of an NHL rink. Now imagine that it's about 1700 stories high. It's a mammoth undertaking, however you look at it. Major capital projects like this demonstrate our ability as a province to forge ahead, even in the face of the economic challenges that we have faced in the last several years. Alberta's government is creating new opportunities for Albertans every day, with a plan to build, to diversify and to create jobs. With this section of the ring road now open, drivers will see less congestion and a safer and smoother commute. All of this is great news for drivers who can spend less time in traffic and focus on more important matters in life. As we mark the opening of the Southwest Calgary Ring Road, work continues on the West Calgary Ring Road as well. In fact, I just drove by this morning and yesterday and the progress is amazing. It's always a challenge, however, living near active construction projects and Calgarians have been very patient. And for that patience, I thank them. This patience will be rewarded. The nine kilometer portion of the Calgary Ring Road is employing thousands of skilled tradespeople as well as hundreds of others in various supporting industries. The project includes improvements along the Trans-Canada Highway between Old Banff Coach Road and Highway 8 as well as a new West Bow River Bridge. 
In 2022, the east-west corridor of the Trans-Canada Highway will open and construction of the Highway 8 detour will continue. 2023 will see ongoing construction of the interchange at Highway 8 and the opening of the West Bow River Bridge. And finally, the West Calgary Ring Road will be fully open to traffic in 2024. When the Calgary Ring Road is complete, it will provide over 100 kilometers of free flow travel. We know how important good infrastructure is to a strong economy. Long commutes or insufficient road infrastructure can be significant barriers to economic recovery and growth. Today's opening is just a part of our journey to economic recovery. And thank you everybody, and thank you everybody for your dedication and patience and commitment in getting us to this celebration today. Now I would like to introduce my colleague, colleague Minister McIver, to say a few words as well. Well, thank you, Minister Sani, and thank you for the kind words, and thank you, everybody, for being here. It's uh, great to be here with uh, my colleague, Richard Gottfried, our MLA from Calgary Fish Creek, uh, obviously uh, with the, uh, the minister we just heard from, uh, Reeve Dan Hen from the uh, county of uh, Rocky View, and uh, is that Suzanne? We got the mask on. Reeve from uh, Foothills County, and of course, His Worship, who needs no introduction at any time. It's great to have him here, too. And, I, and, and to me, that is representative of how this began. This, is, uh, this uh, project, the Southwest Calgary Ring Road, was a willing coalition of people for everybody's benefit. Uh, the uh, talks had been going on for over 60 years. I was uh, honored to have my signature on the agreement. And what's most important about that is the nations were, uh, were fully involved. They, uh, the uh, chief and council of the day uh, negotiated strongly on behalf of their people to make sure the project benefited the Satina people. It's certainly my fervent wish that this will benefit the Satina nation for the next 100 or 1,000 years. And it benefits Calgary, and it benefits all Albertans, and indeed anybody that travels through this area. So, uh, and I think I'd be a little bit remiss if I didn't take a minute to thank the people that do the work. Um, the, the, the minister mentioned them, but this doesn't happen without a lot of whim, uh, skilled men and women uh, going to a lot of trouble uh, through all seasons of the year, whether the weather is good and bad, and, and thank you to you too. So uh, for me, uh, I believe this will give the greatest gift you can give people the gift of time. Uh, people that uh, in Calgary uh, using this uh, part of the road to commute or visit their family and friends will have more time to spend in whatever way they choose and uh, also will support the economic growth and prosperity of uh, the Sutton Nation, the City of Calgary, uh, all of Alberta, the, uh, the, uh, the counties, the, the, uh, the municipal districts and, and I think it will really make improvements for us in the future. So. Thank you for being here and celebrating what I think is a, uh, let me be a small part of what I think is a really important day. And now it's my pleasure to uh, invite, to say a few words, uh, the mayor, his worship, the head and chief. Dada Nastada, Sizay Etia, as Seth just mentioned. And Seth, I wanna say, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you're presenting a point of view because ultimately we are in a world where we got to figure out what it means to go from reconciliation to reconciliation. And there are different points of view. I will say that it has been my privilege for 11 years to work with three successive chiefs and council of the Sutina Nation with Chief Big Flume, Chief Crowchild, and Chief Whitney, and then Chief Whitney again. And that indeed, one of the things that I said at the very beginning is that this road only works if the Sutina people approve of it. And indeed, in a referendum, the Sutina people did approve of it, overwhelmingly. Because ultimately, they found it an important path towards their future prosperity. And my greatest hope is that the nation will achieve that prosperity and that this road will be an important part of that. You know, over the time uh, that I have been in this role, the relationship with the Sutina has been very important to me. For example, you've heard a lot about drinking water advisories in First Nations around the country. 
And one of the very first things we did when I became mayor was we ensured that there was a drinking water agreement with the Sutina Nation because there was no way on earth that I would sit by and be part of that problem. I didn't know that the Sutina High School didn't have clean, fresh drinking water. It does now. And this was a really critical part of the work that we've done to build relationships from the very beginning. My home on Sutina does not have clean drinking water. And I understand that that is still continuing, and it wouldn't have happened if we hadn't built those pipes in the first place under this road. And so ultimately, sure, there's lots of reasons to disagree, and I welcome that because nobody has all the right answers. But we also have to respect the wisdom of the elders who bless this road. We have to respect the wisdom of the knowledge keepers. We have to respect the wisdom of the chief and council. And ultimately, I understand that. But ultimately, not everyone agrees with you. And most of your elders and knowledge keepers don't agree with you, I'm sorry to say. And 75% of your people voted in favor of this road. So ultimately, at some point, we have to discover, we have to discover where our own voice says, Seth. Sure. But ultimately, Seth, ultimately, Seth, at some point, at some point, no, it's all right, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, but Seth, what is false? What of anything I said is false? Your council voted unanimously for it. Every elder and knowledge keeper I've spoken to has been in favor of it. And some 75% of the people in your community voted for it. Did you vote in that referendum yourself? I cannot vote because, because? I am not a nation member because right. of the Indian Act. Okay. So ultimately, those who are nation members who've been building there and building the nation made a decision for the future of their nation. And so ultimately, that is what we have to agree with. And we cannot overwhelm the majority because of small voices, some voices, I should say. So yes, I understand you disagree. I understand you disagree. I understand that. And it's important that you're here. And it's important that we hear that. But ultimately, we also have to listen to the entire community who made a statement about wanting to get out of poverty, about wanting to develop economically, and about wanting to build new relationships with their neighbors. And I welcome that statement, and I'm thrilled to be part of that statement as well. So this is going to be my second last major infrastructure project I get to open. I think there's one more coming. I know you look confused. <laughs> um, but I will. it's on the other side of Stony Trail, as a matter of fact, uh, where I live. And I do, in fact, live on this road. And so although I live in the opposite corner of the city, we really did have an opportunity. To, I had an opportunity to ride most of the road today and to have an opportunity to see how it really is knitting together important parts of our community. Over the last 11 years, we have made a historical investment in mobility in this city. The largest transportation investments in history, in transit, in road infrastructure, and in active transportation. And I'm very proud of that, because as Rick McIver said, the best gift we can give to people is time. The best gift we can give to people is the ability to engage better with community. And one of the great things about this particular project and this interchange that you see here is it not only knits together cars, but it also creates cycling and pedestrian infrastructure for people to better explore the communities with which they live, in which they live. And I think that's really important. But stuff like this doesn't happen without the help of a lot of folks. And so, of course, my first thanks go, as I said already, to successive chiefs and councils and to the people of the Sutina Nation for the decisions they've made about taking charge of their own future. My second set of thanks goes to the government of Alberta uh, for their steadfast commitment over six premiers uh, to getting this project done. Three political parties and six premiers. Thank you, Minister Sani, to you and through you to the incredible staff at Alberta Transportation who've done this great work all this time. Thank you, Reeve Han and Reeve Ohl, for being with us today, as this is an important regional investment as well. But a special thank you, and I'm so happy to be here with my friend Rick McIver. Rick was working on this project when he was a city councillor. Back in the day, it feels like a long time ago, doesn't it, Rick? It might have been a while. And I feel like exactly 11 years ago, you and I had a big debate about the final alignment of this road. And certainly, uh, once he came in as transportation minister, he was able to sign that historic agreement with the Sutina Nation. So Rick, I hope you're feeling good today, because you should feel really proud of what you've been able to accomplish here. This is also a very big project for the city of Calgary. It's about a $150 million project to build all of the various uh, networks that connect into this 
system. Uh, so I really want to thank our area councillors, Councillor Peter DeMong, uh, Councillor Shane Keating, and Councillor Diane collier -Cart for the work that they did, but particularly to our city staff. And we're joined here today by our General Manager of Transportation, Doug Morgan, by the lead of the Ring Road Project, Julie Radke, and of course by our wonderful Director of Transportation Infrastructure, Carenza Frommers, and who's, Carenza, by the way, Scott, is also going, what's the other project? Um, I'll remind you. <laughs> But it is so great to have you and through you to all the wonderful staff who've worked so hard to make this happen. And as always, uh, I want to thank, uh, as Rick and uh, Rajan did, the women and men whose hard work and skills actually got us here, actually built uh, this road. And I know that every day folks came to work in every kind of weather uh, knowing that they were building a legacy for all of us, for our entire community. So with that, I'm really happy. <laughs> I'm really happy that we've gotten here. I'm happy about what this road represents and what it symbolizes, and I hope that it will be safe and it will be efficient and it will be a wonderful way to connect and build community. Back to you, Minister. Thank you, Mayor Nenshi. Thank you, Minister Sani. Thank you, Minister McIver. Uh, and thank you to everybody here. That will do it for our live portion of this afternoon's event. Thank you again.